Okay, so we are looking at lists and dictionaries this week. And lists and dictionaries are what we call collections. And basically they just allow you to put data that has some associative meaning together. You can keep them together, give them a variable name, just like you would give an integer a variable name or a string a variable name. You give it a variable name and you can pass it around with that name. And you can do things using that name. So it's a variable, but because the type of the variable is a collection, you can do more things with it. There are two types of collections in Python that come standard, a list and a dictionary. A list is a relatively simple form of a collection. It, um, you know, it, it, it has some very specific properties. And we've already been working with lists because we have been working with strings. So you're actually already familiar with what a list is. A string is a list that you can't change. A normal list is a list is mutable. You can make changes. You have four properties, create, read, update, and delete, CRUD. And that is an acronym. Um, Dictionaries are a different kind of container. They're not like strings. They're completely different. They have an associative um, key value pair, and they're very handy. And you're going to need to understand both of these to get your game working, and also for the Module 6 project. So again, if you have any questions, let me know. If not, we'll go right into it. The nomenclature or the syntax for a list is brackets. We've seen brackets before in strings, and because a string is the list, you're going to see brackets again here. Now, a few differences from strings is you can create an empty list, and a list has um, the ability to be changed. You can change an element in a list, you can add things to a list, you can remove things to a list. So just, yeah, let me bring up some code here. Uh, simple list, where's my simple list? Here's my simple list. So this is a simple list. I should have put comments in here, sorry. The, this is a simple list. First of all, I'm creating an empty list on line three. Let me make this bigger. Hopefully everybody can see that better. On line three, I'm creating an empty list. And the way I do that is I give it a name. The name is empty. Yes. Oh, good. I'm glad you guys can see it better. Um, sorry. Uh, on line three, I've created a variable. The name of the variable is empty. I know it is a variable because it is, a, it is on the left-hand side of a single equal sign. On the right-hand side of the single equal sign is something new. It's two square braces, an open square brace and a closed square brace. And that, an open square brace and a closed square brace is an empty list. That's exactly what that says to Python. Python. Now I can also put things inside it, and then it's not empty, but it's still a list. So that, that's how you create an empty list. There will be nothing in it. Uh, here, let me just edit the configuration real quick and go to simple list. And by the way, as usual, these will all be up on the YouTube channel. So I'm just going to run this real quick. So when you're looking at this line, line five, what you're seeing is that. So if you see, Eric, sorry, I don't think it's going to stay. If you see an open and close uh, square brackets in uh, I, I, on your output, it means there's nothing in the list. I can create a list that is um, populated. Line seven is a list that is populated. Now let's look at the syntax here. Again, 
simple as a variable. I know it's a variable because it's on the left-hand side of a single equal sign. I then open with a left square bracket. And then there's a stuff in there. So I have a string called Lisa. I have a number 29. I have a float 10. And I have a Boolean true. And then it closes with a right square bracket. Now I just put all those different values in there so that you can see that you don't have to have the same type in a list. You can have as many different types as you need. You can have strings, you can have integers, floats, booleans, and any combination of the above, as many as you, know, as you need. So simple is a populated list. And if I look down here, it's just going to show what's in simple. So then I can iterate through a list. Last week we were talking about fours and whiles. Or sorry, that was week four. We were talking about iterating over things. So how do I iterate over a list? Because it's great that all this data is there. But it doesn't do me any good if I can't get to it. So how do I get to it? I use a for loop. When we were originally talking about loops, I said for had a lot of very handy things you could do with it just because it was a for loop. And this is one of those things. This is the, These two lines actually do quite a lot. I am iterating over the simple list. And I'm just going to print the item. But what line 10 does is, is it says, hey, Python, here's a list called simple. I want to look at each element in that list. And when you pull the element out, call it item. And then I can print item. So all I have to do to iterate over a list in Python is those two lines. If I just want to see what's in it. Now, you can also iterate over a list using the range function. We saw the range function when we talked about for loops initially. And the way I do that is I just say from 0 to the length of the list. And then I can do whatever I want. I can print it out. I can determine, you know, counter. If simple of counter equals 29, then simple of counter equals 39. What did I do here? I checked a value in a list. And then based on whether or not that evaluated to true, I changed a value in a list. This is important. It is because lists are mutable, which means they're changeable. That allows me to do this. So I'm just going to put a little breakpoint here. And we're going to debug this just so we can walk through the code and see what happens. So first of all, there's just my empty list. So I'm going to step over that. I'm just going to print my empty list. We don't need to worry about that. Now, say I'm sorry about this down here. I can't make that bigger. I'm going to step over simple. And what you will see here is you will see in PyCharm, simple equal list colon four. So I know it's a list. There are four elements in a list. And then it tells me what those elements are. Additionally, I can use this down, this arrow. And PyCharm will tell me not only that it's a list, it will tell me at each index what the value is and the type. This is very handy when you're having to go through code. Now, this also tells us something else. It tells us, just like strings, that lists have indexes. So everything in the list has a placeholder, has a, an integer value associated with it. Lisa has the integer value 0 as its index. The number 29 has uh, an index of 1. 10 has an index of 2. True has an index of 3. So we get a lot of information from PyCharm. So now if I, um, I'm going to step over, and then I'm just going to go here, and I'm just going to roll through this. And you'll see 
that it goes through every item in the list until it's done. So now this section of the code, basically I want to change it. If the value is 29, I want to make that, that place in the list 39. So I do a four counter in range. So this is how you iterate over a loop if you're looking to modify a value. Because I need to have, I need its placeholder, I don't need the value. What this did was it just gave me values. If I look at the console output up to here, it just gave me values. And that's great, but I can't change just a value. I have to change a list in, I have to change a value inside of a list. So if I step over, let's go back to the debugger. And I'm just going to print out simple of zero is Lisa. Back to the debugger. Is it is simple of counter 29? No, it's not, because right now counter is zero and simple of zero is Lisa. We can see that right there. Counter is zero, simple of counter is Lisa. So I'm going to step over. I'm back to simple. Simple of uh, counter is 1. Simple of counter is actually 29. So what's going to happen? What's going to happen is I'm going to step into the if block. I am now going to change. I want you to look at this right here and right here. I'm going to change 29 to 39. There it goes, 39 and 39. Actually modify a value inside the list based on the index location of the list. And I'm just going to finish this out. And then I'm going to print simple. So in this, in this little, uh, little file, you see how to create an empty string, or sorry, an empty list. You see how to create a populated list. You see how to get to just the items in the list, just the values. And then here, we see how to get at the value, but with, but in, but with the reference into the list. So, uh, and this, the syntax here is just like you would do it for a string. So you have, um, in our case, the list name, open, left square bracket, whatever your index counter is, and then close right square bracket. Okay. So I think you got all that. List methods. All kinds of me methods you've got on lists. You've got append, extend, insert. Um, so you can modify the list in bunches of different ways. Append adds something to the bottom of the list. That's what it does. It just adds something new. So I have here, I have, um, I have four elements in the list. So what if I wanted to add a fifth? Well, I could simply say, Simple dot append just added to the list, and then I could whoops, I could print simple again, and we would see that it was added to the list. So if we look here, this is before I did the append. This is after I did the append. So. I can, uh, it's a great way if you have to ever go through and just populate a list uh, while, and you don't know how big that list is or what the elements of the list is before you start working with it. You can remove elements from a list. You can remove it. You can pop it. You can pop a given element. Um, those are handy if you're doing stacks which we don't do in this class. You can modify elements in a list. You can sort it. 
It might come handy in a lab or a challenge. And you can reverse sort it, and that might come in handy in a challenge. You can also return the index based on the value, and you can um, count the number of times value x is in a list, which might become handy in a lab. Um, iterating over a list, we talked about this a little bit. There's a couple of different ways. You iterate over, do I have another one? Iterate, no. Let's input to list. Okay. No. Um, no. This is, this is just iterating over the list the way we saw it before. Basically, it's for, in this case, I used the, the variable name item. I have my list, which, and I'll show you this in a minute because you're going to input and split, which is something that's done in one of the labs. Um, and then we're just printing out the item. Um, so that is one of the ways you iterate over a list. You simply have, you use a for loop. It's already built in to deal with lists. You give it um, a variable name in, very important, and then whatever your list name is and the colon, and then do whatever you want with it. So you don't have to worry about the length or anything like that. The second way to iterate over it was to uh, count the index which we just saw. Okay, I'm not going to go through the list games. You guys can do that. Um, it's just to make you feel more comfortable in iterating over a list. Now, you can nest lists, lists, which means you can have a list inside of a list. So let's go here to nested list. Doesn't look like a lot of code there, does it? But it does quite a bit of stuff. So, so let's start with the syntax for a nested list. Okay, first of all, you're going to see a left square bracket, and it ends with a right square bracket. However, inside, yeah, let me get rid of the squiggles. Inside this list are other lists. So it is a list of lists. And that's what it means by nested. So I have this list. Now that's interesting because I have another left square bracket, a matching right square bracket, and then I have values of commas. But after that first set of square brackets, I have a comma. And then I have another set of square brackets, which is a list, and then a comma, and then another set. So what this is telling me is that I separate the, the lists that are inside the list by commas. It's just like you're working if I had put the number one there, comma number two. It's exactly the same. The only difference is that this is a list. So we have to have the right syntax for a list. Now, how do I iterate over a nested list? Well, there's a couple of ways to do it. I generally prefer to do it with this kind of a for loop structure. Now, you'll see me using row and column. And row and column are because I like to think of this as a matrix or as an Excel spreadsheet. So you have everything is row-wise and then column-wise. So what do I mean by that? A row is the list, the inner list. So I have the outer list, which is nested, and then I have three inner lists. I have the inner list that contains one, two, three, the inner list that contains four, five, six, and the inner list that contains seven, eight, and nine. So this is a row because you go across. The other one is a column, and the column is actually the individual cell. So when I get to the point where I have column, 
I'm actually inside this list and I can read the values. So let us do this and we're going to just debug it and see what happens. So let's go down to the debugger. First of all, we're going to step over and we have a nested list. It has three elements and you will see if you go into the debugger, you will see when you use that arrow that you have 0, 1, and 2. So we still have indexes like we had the last time, except the index of 0 just gets me to another list. The index of 1 gets me to another list. And then if I go down here, I have this additional index, another 0, which gets me to the value 1. 1 gets me to 2. So what that tells me is I'm going to have multiple indexes that I have to deal with. And that is correct because we're going to have an index for the row and, an, and then an index for the value. So let's step through this and we'll see, let's go to the console, that nested of 0, 0 is 1. So if I go to 0, 0, I get that. Because remember, it's still, it's still the same counting. Every, every index starts with 0. It's length minus 1. All of that is still the same. You're just doing it with lists inside of lists. So if I run this again, I'm going to say 0 of 1 is 2. Is that, can I make that one bigger? Yeah, I can make that one bigger. Okay. So I'm still on zero. You'll notice that I haven't gone back up to this top to line five yet. I'm still going between six and seven, and that's because I haven't exhausted the number of elements in the first list yet. So I'm going to step over. I'm going to print... 0 of 2 is 3, and then I am now finally making it to that outer loop. So the outer loop is going to change because the, the number, the index number for the next row is 1. So you'll see that these are all 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, and 2, and I get the next set of numbers, and then the same thing. So that is how you deal with a nested list. Did we have everyone leave? No. Nope. Okay. So that is what happens when you uh, nest your lists. I know there's a lot to go over tonight, and I apologize if I'm going too fast. Stop me if you have questions. List slicing. List slicing is just like string slicing. Basically, you're saying get me these two elements into a new list. Just do that for me. And that's what it will do. So it, just like you could slice the, the letters, you can slice the list. Uh, it just produces a new list. Modifying lists. Uh, we looked at that just a minute ago. Basically, using the index value for the list, you can simply modify a value in a list. It's, uh, it's very easy, and we did it in, is that in simple list? That was in simple list. We modified it right there. You know, I'm going a little fast, but we still have to go through all of dictionaries, and I want to go through the labs. Um, I don't know why they talk about the list comprehensions. Um, it's basically allowing you to, um, the, these are standard things that you would do with a list. So they are example of standard things, and then it's a shorthand for doing things with lists. And that's okay. I don't tend to use the shorthand because I don't find it easier to read. For me, 
I, I, the, the long hand works just fine. It doesn't run any slower and it's easier for me to read. The comprehensions are, are, they just shorten it. So you actually have more things happen in a smaller number of, you know, in a smaller amount of code. So you can go ahead and look through the list comprehensions and see if you like them. Use them if you do. Sorting lists. Uh, there's a sort function. You don't ever have to worry about sorting a list. Python will do it for you. Don't ever write your own sort function unless there's a really, really, really good reason for it. Let Python do it. So if you have a challenge or a lab that talks about sorting things, you just want to use the sort function. That's all you want to do. Python will sort it, and you will have something in sorted order. Given the type, um, okay. Oh, here's an important distinction, sorry. Sort doesn't create a new list. It modifies the current list that you're using. Sorted creates a new list. I know that's a little bit of a, of a distinction, but you might need that at some point in time. Um, let's see. Command line arguments. So this is basically what happens when you are running a program and you put in um, and you put in input. You're using an input statement. Is that you're really putting in a list, and that list under the hood is something that Python can do something with, and um, it's stored in a, in a special list called sys.argv, and then you will use the different arguments. Uh, we don't need them hugely for this class, but it's important to understand what they are. We're not going to go through the engineering examples. Varied amount of input data, which is lab 6.12, and actually we can just do that now as we're going. So. Here is the pseudocode for 6.12. And what we're doing is basically, um, you have varying amounts of data. Write a program that takes any number of integers as input and outputs the average and the max. So if I look at this, I have, you take a value or a series of values, you're going to split it. Okay, because what happened was that you just input a string with spaces. So what do we do to get that into a list? Well, we use the split function. It was in 211, uh, Zybooks 211. And so that will create a list for you. Now we have to convert strings to integers. So we're going to create an empty list. We're going to iterate over the list that we created with the split, and we're going to convert it to an integer and then append it to our new list, which is called token. Then we're going to use that list, and I'm sorry, which is the new list is input data. Then we're going to use that new list to get the average and the max. And so to get the average, you want to use the sum command, the sum function. Again, you don't have to worry about doing this yourself. Python does it for you. There's a function called sum. To get the average, it's sum divided by the length. We already know how to get the length. Max, you don't have to worry about writing your own max function because Python already has a function called max. Okay? We have built-in functions in 6.3 that iterate over lists. Those functions are there, and then you just output them. So that is lab 6.12. This pseudocode will be up on uh, the YouTube site probably tomorrow. Um, filter and sort a list. So let's. So this is basically you're going to get a list of integers and you're going to output um, non-negative integers in ascending order. Well, that sounds like a sort to me. So. If we look at that, there we go. So we're going to input, same as before, just going to input a list of integers. I am going to split 
just like I did before. I've got um, a new empty list called input data. I'm going to run roll through what can, what I the list that I split from, and I'm going to say if it's greater than zero, then I'm going to append it, um, append the token to input data to the new list input data, and then I'm going to sort it because you, there's just a sort function that you can use on the list. And then I'm going to output the values. That's it. That's all you have to do. Remember that you, you're given the split function. You're given the sort function. And all you have to do is check whether or not that element in the original list is greater than zero. And then you can append it to the empty list that you created. This is the append function, so it would be input data dot append. Okay, so now we're going to go off to dictionaries. Dictionaries are a completely different kind of collection than list. Lists are great, they're beautiful, you can do a lot with them. There are some things you can't do with them cannot associate meaning, not, not inherently in the list. You have values. It's a great way for storing and keeping values. But there is no ability to associate meaning with the elements in a list. Dictionary, however, you can. Dictionary allows you to have what are called key value pairs. The key is something that, that is a descriptor of the value. So if I go, and I'm going to do this, and if, by the way, dictionaries become very important because you're going to have to use them for your game. We're going to go over a little bit of how to iterate over a dictionary, and it'll look something like you have some rooms, so we're going to do that in a minute. So I have a dictionary, and I'm going to create a dictionary. Now, my dictionary is just the, a variable, D-I-C-T. So I know it's a variable because it's on the left-hand side of a single equal sign. Now I have curly braces. I used to have, with lists, I had square braces. For dictionaries, I have curly braces to create it. I have an opening curly brace. Uh, on the left and a closing curly brace on the right. And then I have these key value pairs. So the key always comes first and the value always comes second. And there is a colon in between them. Whoops. Unless I move it, there is a colon in between them to say the left hand side is the key and the right hand side is the value. Then I have a comma. And then I have another key value pair. Mm -hmm. And I have a comma, and I have another key value pair. Okay? So that's a dictionary. I just created a populated dictionary with three key value pairs. The name of the, the first key is name, and the first value is Lisa. So what, how, do I, how do I get at this stuff? Well, it's going to look somewhat similar. So... If I want to get the name from my dictionary, I know that the key is name because I can read it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say from the dictionary named dict, get me the name. So this is going to be dict of name will get you to the value Lisa. The same with age, it will get you to the value 29. The same with date, it will get you to the value 42. I can add to a dictionary. So I can add this whole new key called info, and I can give it a value, some more info. I can modify an element in the dictionary because I want to change age to 39. I can also iterate over a dictionary by getting the keys. So let's take a look at all this real quick. Hopefully not too quick. And by the way, stop me if you do have any questions.
Okay, so we're going to go here. So I'm going to go in the debugger. And so I'm creating this dictionary. Now, when I am down here in the debugger tab, I have the, the word, I have a dict. It's got three, three key value pairs. And if you'll look at here, when we saw it with a list, it was 0, 1, 2, 3. There's no 0, 1, 2, 3 here in red. There's name, age, date. Name, age, date. That's where it gets it from. And then you have the values. The name, the value for name is Lisa. The value for age is 29. The value for date is 42. So if I step over these, let's go to console and make it bigger. We see name is Lisa. Age is 29. Date is 42. And then just so you can see how it happens, if I print out a dictionary, just the whole thing. This is what it's going to look like. And now I want to add something to the dictionary. So I'm going to go back here to my debugger so we can see it. So now I have info, and it's some more info. And I have printed it. Go to the console. There it is. I've changed age to 39, it was 29, and now I'm iterating over it. So how do you iterate over a dictionary? Because you know how to iterate over a list, you just count from zero to wherever, and Python will do it for you. Well, I'll do something similar for a dictionary, even though there's no index value, even though there's no 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, there is a key. And you can iterate over a dictionary using the key. Remember, we have key value pairs. So the keys are name, age, and date. So what I tell Python to do in this for loop is get me the key. So when I say for key in dict, and key is just the value name, and dict is just the name of the dictionary. So this could have been, is key could have been x, okay? It's just a name. Then I can get the value by using that key. So if I step over this, we'll see name is Lisa. The key just changed to age. The key just changed to date and the key just changed to info. So that is you, how you iterate over a dictionary. And uh, it's, it's very handy. And again, it's all built into the for loop. There's nothing special or extra you have to do. You say for key in dictionary or for x in my list, however you want to put that, it will get, it will get you that key and then you can iterate over the dictionary. Okay. Uh, dictionary methods, just like list methods, there are dictionary methods. You can clear out a dictionary, which doesn't delete the dictionary, it just gets rid of all the data. You can get, you can say get the key, and it will get you the value at that key. You can update, and it merges two dictionaries together. Uh, you can remove a key value pair by popping the key. So those are just some of them. We already talked about iterating over a dictionary. And it's, it's pretty straightforward. Dictionary nesting. This gets a lot of students. But it... Um, it's not as complex as it seems to be. So what I've done, and what we'll do here, sorry, does somebody have a question? Okay, 6.13 has you a bit stumped, Linda. We'll go back to that uh, at the end, if that works. 
So what I've done is we have this, is this it? Uh, yeah. So this is, I iterate over dict. Okay. So I have three rooms. And each of the and each of those rooms can get to at least one of the other rooms that I have. So I have three rooms. They're connected somehow, and I can get to one room from another. If this sounds a little bit like what your game would be like, then that's okay. So what you'll see here is I have a dictionary of dictionaries. So rooms is my outermost dictionary. And then for rooms, I have room one as the key. My value is a whole nother dictionary. In that whole other dictionary, I have a key called up and a key called down. The key called up has a value of room two. The key called down has a value of room three. So room one, if I go up, I get to room two. If I go down, I get to room three. For room two, if I go up, I, sorry, if I go down, I get to room one. So room two is the outermost key. And the value for room two is another dictionary. And that dictionary happens to have one key value pair. It could have had two. I have a third key in my rooms dictionary and that third key associates with another dictionary. That dictionary I can go up or I can go down. If I go up I go to room one. If I go down I go to room two. So that is what a dictionary of dictionaries looks like or a nested dictionary. This is the pattern you need for your project. This is the pattern you need for the whole Dragon project that they're having you do for Module 6. So how do I iterate over this dictionary of dictionaries because it doesn't even look like a list of lists? Well, Python will do that for you. It's just a little bit different. So for my outer for loop, I'm going to do this with for loops again my outer for loop, the dictionary I'm using is rooms, and I'm going to say my variable name for this outer loop is room. So I'm going to say for room in rooms, well, I'm going to do something. What am I going to do? First, I'm going to say I'm in whatever room I'm in, okay? And then I've got this inner for loop. The center for loop has for direction, my variable name, in rooms of room. So I want to get to that second dictionary. Rooms gets me to this guy. But I want to get to the room that is gonna that that I'm gonna be taken to when I go up or down. How do I get to that? Well I get to that by saying rooms of room. So if room one is my key, then I'm going to get to that whole thing. That's what it's going to give me back. If it's room two, it's going to give me all that back. If it's room three, it's going to give me all that back. So let's walk through this a bit and see how, um, and see what this looks like. So I'm going to run this in the debugger, and so we can see here that I have rooms, it's a dictionary, and it has three key value pairs. Remember the outermost dictionary, even though it looks like it has all this stuff, rooms only has three key value pairs. It has room one as a key, room two as a key, and room three as a key. And then what is in those are other dictionaries. So if I look down here, room one, it has a dictionary with two elements. 
Room two has a dictionary with one element, and room three has a dictionary with two elements. If I use the arrow again, I can say up and down. If I go up, I go to room two. If I go down, I go to room three. Okay, so let's step over. So room is room one, okay? I'm just going to print out to the console, I'm in room one. If I step over it again, direction is up. So I have room one up. That's what I just did by stepping into the second loop. Then what's going to happen? Well, I want to print out when I'm in, when I move some direction, I go to a different room. So direction makes perfect sense. It comes right from here. The room I'm going to go to, I have to get to by saying, whoops, by not moving the screen like that, by saying rooms of room, because that's the key, of direction. So I have to do three things. I have to do outermost dictionary, the key that I'm at in that outermost dictionary, and then the key that I'm at in the next level down. So that's what this syntax is right here. Outermost, the key that I'm at for the outer for rooms, the outermost dictionary, and then the key that I'm at for the innermost dictionary. And if I step over, I'm going to get when I move up, I go to room two. And then I'm going to come down here, and the direction is down because I just moved to this. I haven't moved outside of this dictionary yet. I haven't gone back up to that top loop. So when it's down, I then, when I move down, I move to room three. There are no more directions in room one. So I go back up to the top. So I'm back out here, okay? The only options I have are room one, room two, and room three. We've already finished with room one. So now I'm going to get room two. So I am room two. This is the line I'm at right here. I'm going to print. I'm in room two. So now I'm going to have some directions. So the direction in this case can only be down. So my direction in rooms of room. So rooms of this is the key that I'm at, room two. I'm going to then print. I'm in room two. When I move down, I go to room one. So there's no more directions to be had in room two. So I go back up to the top of the loop. I'm now in room three. So this is where I'm at, right there. I step over. I'm in room three. So now I have directions for room three, and I should have an up and a down. And I do. I have up. So when I move up, I go to room one. And then my next direction is going to be down. And when I go, when I move down, I go to room two. And then I'm done. So that is how you iterate over a dictionary of dictionaries. It seems a little complex, but when you, when you watch where you are, it is much easier. And you're going to have to not necessarily iterate. You're going to have to know how to access where you're going from where you are in that game. This is where you are. This is where you're going. And this is how you get there. So when a user puts in north, and you're in room one, or let's just say the user puts in up, and you're in room one, you're going to say, well, rooms of room one, do I have an up? If I don't have an up, I'm invalid. If I do have an up, then where do I go? So my next move, and the place I'm going to end up at, is room two. So you get yourself familiar with this 
setup because this is the setup for your rooms and your directions for your game. This is how you move. Okay. So 6.18, word frequencies. Um, this, is, this is good because you just use the count. Anybody have any? Okay. So word frequencies. This is, there isn't a lot of code here. You're, somebody's going to input a value. And they're going to input a sentence. And what they're asking you to do is for each input, that you get in sorry for each um, element in the user sentence you want to get the count of that um, that value sorry drawing a blank so if it says hey hi Ma mark hi mark Hey is going to occur one, high is going to occur two, mark is going to occur one, high is going to occur two, and mark is going to occur one. So all you're doing is you're splitting this out into a string, and then you're saying, hey, count the word hey. How many times do I have hey? How many times do I have high? How many times do I have mark? So it's pretty straightforward. And... This, there's actually a direct example for this, and it's in 6.3.2, and it's the second loop in the example. And you're going to have to do this using the string formatting step. So that is 6.18, and it's relatively straightforward. 6.19, replacement words. So this is a kind of a fun one. Um, so you're given word pairs and you're going to replace them. So you've got automobile, car, manufacturer, maker, children, kids. And you say an automobile manufacturer recommends car seats for children if the automobile doesn't already have one. And the output is the car maker recommends car seats for children if the car doesn't already have one. So you're going to replace all instances of automobile with car, all instances of manufacturer with maker, and all instances of children with kids. Um, and so this looks like it would be a good dictionary. Whoops, here. So replacement words. So you're going to create an empty dictionary. You're going to put in some words. Um, they're going to then make word pairs. You're going to create a dictionary. So that means two words go together. So when you're iterating over the list that is created by split, you want to increment every other, every other time. So you want to do two together. And the way you do this is in table 4.6.1. It shows you how to count every second integer. That's what you're going to want to do there. Then you're going to get a sentence from the input. So you got your word pairs. Then you're getting your sentence. And then you're going to replace the words. So you're going to say for original word, new word, in word pair item. Then you're just going to replace one word with the other. And the replace is just done. Um, yeah, the replace is just the string replace. And then, I'm sorry. Yeah, it's just the string replace. And then you output your new sentence. So the hardest part of this is creating this dictionary properly. And you do that by something we did in module four. So it's it's every other one. So you take you know index zero and index one become a key value pair. Index two and index three become a key value pair and so on. So I will go back to six point one three. Does anybody else have any questions and Linda what were the what it what has you stumped on this one hold on I just have to go and get that one again oops I'll just 
six. There we go. Okay. So the issue is that the output is an empty list. So what you're saying, I think, is that when you output the values, you have an empty list. Is that right? If so, it means that when you, you created the empty list, you probably didn't append to it. I mean, I can't know because I don't see your code, but my guess is that either there were no integers greater than zero or that you didn't depend. And the way you do that is here. Uh, sorting list methods. So check that you are appending this guy right here. Because that's how you're going to get new elements into an existing empty list. That's the only way you're going to get new items into an empty list is to do an append on the list. Does that make sense? I'm hoping it does. Does anybody have any other questions? I would prefer you did not share what you have in this because it shares it with everybody else. Um, and are, if you are in my class, Linda, you're welcome to send me the code and I will look it over. But I don't think you're in my class. Um, okay. So if nobody has any other questions, uh, do you have any questions about the game? Okay, so if nobody has any questions about the game um, or anything else, I'm going to end it here and I'll post this tomorrow. Yay, good job, Linda. I'm glad you're moving along. I will post this tomorrow and uh, please let me know if you guys have any questions. I'm glad going over the dictionary helped, Dan. Let me know if there's any other questions. It can be confusing in the very beginning. So I'm going to stop sharing and I'm going to stop the recording.